Hi, my name's Chad, um, and I'm a third year architecture student at Cal Poly. Um, and today I'm going to try and show you how to modify uh, Rhino display modes so that you can get more finished quality images straight out of Rhino. Um, now, I'm really not meaning this to be a substitute for V-Ray or more formalized rendering techniques or other graphical things, but it, I think it's just another good tool to have in your tool belt um, to quickly export images that could show your project in a better light than a Rhino screenshot, um, but happen just as quickly. So your Rhino display modes are these things, wireframe, shaded mode, um, where you're probably going to do most of your modeling, as well as ghosted, technical, um, and the newest addition to the family Arctic mode. Um, so these are sort of the standard ones that Rhino gives you, um, and they're all quite useful for modeling um, and seeing the geometries in the case of um, not, not artistic, sorry for that, everybody, in the case of Arctic mode. Um, but Rhino also has sort of this backdoor function where you can go in um, and access each of, the, um, each of the properties which enables these views to be the way they are. Um, so you can um, sort of combine the elements of the best of Rhino in-house rendering um, to make these more finished quality uh, display modes. Um, and an example of this would be this. Um, which is something I've developed um, through the last couple quarters of messing around with these display modes. So how you're going to access this is you're going to go up to File um, and down to Properties, and it'll open up this menu for you. Um, in the Mac, you can press Command, Comma, and it'll open up the Rhino Preferences menu. Um, and I, I think the second column down, or the second row down, first icon to the left is display modes. Um, and it'll open up when you click that something similar to this. It's a little bit differently, uh, or it's a little bit different. Um, and it has a little bit less control than the Windows version. But I heard that the Rhino 7 that's coming out soon is going to sort of bump Rhino for Mac up the next notch to give you more control. So once you're in this document properties menu, you're going to scroll down to view and it'll appear for you like this. Um, and once you're in view, you can click on display modes and it'll, on your right will appear a menu like this. Um, and once there, you can select the mode that you desire to copy um, and you just click copy. And that's going to make a copy of Arctic mode. I generally feel like the most sort of generic mode that you can e easily and quickly take to a pretty finished quality, nice looking rendering mode is the Arctic. Um, but you could also do this with pen, um, and I've seen people use that to great advantage. So then you go and you can name it whatever you want. So we're going to name it mode 4000 this time, because I think this is the fourth 4,000th time that I've tried to do this tutorial video. Um, and so the, the first step along the way is background, um, is selecting your background. So you can select transparent, um, use render settings, an image file, just have, you know, have fun with it. But I think that white turns out the best for quick modes. Um, so I'm going to go into this mode 4,000, and you'll see that it looks exactly like Arctic mode. Um, does. I haven't changed anything at all yet, um, but it'll quickly become something a little bit better, um, at least I think, and um, yeah, using these settings. So under all these other settings, the output image gamma, I don't really know what all that does. I leave it the same. I'm sure you could explore that and there'd be a wealth of advantages it would give to you. The first thing that I'm going to sort of modify is the shading settings. So we're going to shade vertex colors um, and go and click single color for all objects. Um, and this is going to allow you to control the um, object color, how these things are rendering. Um, I give it 
to gloss, but you can go up or down. Um, and this, the gloss helps give uh, sort of more life to your forms. So if you have curve forms, the gloss is going to help those curves show. Um, and then down in single object color, right now it's just a little bit below um, pure white. And I like to shift it to pure white, and that gives it just a little more oomph, as you can see. Um, and then you go to visibility. Um, this controls the things that are showing up in this viewport. So certain viewports show ISO curves, shading mode does. Um, I think that's a little, it looks a little dirty for this purpose, so I keep those off. Tangent edges help curve geometries to show up. Um, tangent seams aren't really necessary. Mesh wires, if you have meshes, you know, just play with it. Um, for my purposes, I'm going to leave text on, clipping planes on, um, curves and tangent edges. Um, and then under surface edge settings, and this is pretty important, you're going to go to, you're going to click in there and type in one. Um, and so now all of a sudden you get, it looks like this mode has line work over the top of it. So it looks like a render underlaid with line work. Um, and that's pretty that starts to give it a lot of pop. Um, and if you're not doing really intense, realistic rendering, which you're probably not gonna be at this point, um, having the, the line work over top, it's gonna um, give your, your renders a graphic appeal. Um, and that's pretty neat um, and might help. And then under the next thing we're gonna modify is lighting scheme. Right now we're using ambient occlusion lighting scheme and we're going to switch to scene lighting. Um, and so you can immediately see that this brings up all the shadows. And really, all of a sudden, the mode doesn't even look as good as it did before, I think. Um, but we'll, we'll get there. We'll bring it back. So back in the Rhino mode, to control your lights, if you didn't have those shadows pop on, you can type in sun into the command bar. Um, and you can click your sun on. And then... If you, manual control is also selected, you can pivot that sun around your model um, so that you get the best lighting on it, um, so that your view pops just like you want it to. And then over with lights, you could also have your skylight on or off, um, and that could give you some soft shadows with the skylight or really harsh shadows without the skylight. So now going back to the viewport properties, um, the next thing we're going to do is go into objects. Uh, and this helps your all of the points, curves, surfaces, and meshes display differently. It gives you individual control over all of them. And there's a lots of play you can do if you have points or a lot of curves or meshes in your project. But this is a purely surface-based geometry. Um, and so all we have to do for now is edit the surfaces. Um, so what we're going to do is under surface edge settings and edge color usage, we're going to select um, use a single color for all edges. Right now it's black and you can see that all the edges are currently displaying as black. And what we're going to do is we're going to change it to dark gray. And I think this is a pretty pivotal step in the um, viewport mo modification because all of a sudden all those areas that used to be um, hidden with the shadow now can pop and you can see the geometry, but it gives you sort of this really harsh uh, Wes Jones style um, to your renders. Um, and that's sort of cool, this matte shadows thing, um, if you like that kind of thing, I guess. Um, and the final step, although within each of these, there's all sorts of things that can be done, but the final step to, to getting it where you might want it to get is the shadow settings. Um, so I really don't have like a specified or prescribed way that I modify my shadows. It's sort of just guesswork for me. You can modify, you know, minimum or maximum um, video memory usage um, or somewhere in between, which gives you sharper or grainier shadows, as it says. Um, I like to keep it on sharper shadows, but it's going to slow down your computer a little bit. Um, and then soft edge quality, um, you know, you just, you keep sliding them, I guess, max blurring, 
If you want softer shadows, I like the no blurring. I think it gives a cool effect. Um, you can do cleaner and dirtier um, self-shadowing. So this will, you know, it, if you have really steep angles, um, you, the objects will self-shadow themselves um, based on where the sun is. Um, this is helpful if you have lots of textures, but, um, and then your, if you have any transparent objects, you can give them um, sort of varying uh, transparencies of their shadows to, to give them, even in their shadows, the look of transparency. Um, and the, I don't even know what the camera-based clipping bubble is, but slide it. If it looks cool, use it. Um, and for now, though, there's all sorts of tweaking that can be done to make these things pop even more. Here is what we've made. Um, so we've taken Arctic mode straight, looking like this. It's a little bit dull, a little bit flat. Um, and all of a sudden we've made it into something that looks like this. Um, and with a little bit more massaging, you can get it like this, but you know, you can see that it's pretty much the same. Um, or you could even, you could do other things. Um, here's one that I think looks a little bit cool. Um, here's another one that I think looks cool. Um, and each of them is just a subtle variation on the next. But we'll go back to the one that we've made, mode 4000. And now the, the critical step for exporting is typing in your command bar, um, view capture to file. Um, and when you do this, it will pop up a little thing, view capture settings. Um, and you'll keep your, um, you'll probably keep your current view, but you can cycle through any of your views. Um, you can select if you want different background options. I like to have transparent background clicked on. Um, and then you can change your resolution um, so that if, you, if you're printing it out larger, um, it's going to display better, won't be pixelated. Or if it's smaller, um, it'll take less load on your computer. Um, but changing the scale will increase the line weights so maybe that's something you want to balance if you're printing something out really big and you have scale at one your line weights might come out a little bit too thin with that edge thickness of one um, scaling it up to two changes that edge thickness to two um, and you can change all of your um, all of these settings so i'll just bump it up to three um, giving me 4038 by 2301 pixels um, for the image and i'll click ok um, and then in the file saving, I will save it as a PNG, giving it a clear background. Um, and I'll name it view01. And so with that, now we just wait a second. Um, and it'll say image successfully saved. Um, and now you can go, I think, to, this is where I saved it, view01. And bada bing, bada boom. So you can see that... Um, when you zoom in, all those edges are just a little bit thin, but straight from Rhino, we got actually pretty high resolution on um, on this view capture to file. And that's something that if you're in a crunch or you have a deadline or maybe just a little desk crit, you could pump your model through 20 of these things and you can figure out what the best time of day for sun is. You can figure out um, you know, how elements are casting in their shadows, or you could even just, if you need a quick render so that Angela can give you a, a better desk crit, you can export one of these um, and maybe she can see what you're working on clearer um, and a little bit better. So this is sort of an intermediary step between um, a finished render and a, a pure Rhino model, um, but I hope it's helpful to you um, and I wish you guys the best.